Hello YouTube and welcome back to another Blender tutorial. Today I'm going to be bringing you the first in a series of tutorials that's going to be covering all of the different sensors, controllers, and actuators that you can use in the Blender game engine. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking an in-depth look at each of the sensors. We're going to have one video covering all of the controllers at once, and then we're going to have another in-depth video for each of the actuators. So for the sensors, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at what they do, and we're also going to be then stepping into Python and seeing what sort of different attributes you can use with those sensors. So the first sensor that we're going to be looking at is the Always sensor. And the reason for this is that it is sort of a base model sensor. All of the other sensors have the same stuff as the Always sensor. They just sort of add to it. So what does an Always sensor do? Well, an Always sensor is always. And so this is useful if you want to trigger something just at the very beginning of your game, or if you want something to always be happening. For instance, if you wanted a windmill to be spinning, you may use an always sensor because you always want that windmill to spin. So let's go ahead and look at what each of these buttons do. And I'm only going to be covering these buttons in this first tutorial uh, because there's no need to go over them again for the other sensors as they do the same thing. The first one on the left is activate true level triggering. And what that does is it tells the sensor to send out pulses for as long as the sensor is positive. Next to that, we have activate low level triggering. And what that does is it tells the sensor to send out pulses for as long as the sensor is not positive. And in the case of the always sensor, that never happens, uh, so that's not very useful with the always sensor. If we have either of the pulse modes turned on, we have a frequency number light up here, and this is the number of frames between each pulse that the sensor sends out. So for instance, if I turn true level pulse mode on, and I have a frequency of 10, that means that the sensor will send out a pulse. It will then wait 10 more frames before sending out another pulse. Next to that we have level, which we're not going to be concerning ourselves with in this tutorial. If you want to learn about that, you can check out the link in the description. But unless you're doing some more advanced stuff, it's not going to be very useful. Next to that is the tap button. And what this does is it tells the sensor to become not positive directly after the sensor is positive. So if I turn on pulse mode again, I still have a frequency of 10. What this will do is the sensor will send out a pulse, then the sensor will set itself to negative for the remaining 10 frames, and then the sensor will trigger again. So on the far right then we have invert. And what this does is it inverts the evaluation status of the sensor. So for instance, this sensor evaluates to positive. With invert turned on, that means it will appear to be negative. Or if the sensor is not positive and invert is turned on, then it will appear to be positive. And with all sensors, we have this pin mode, which allows you to have this sensor always displayed, even between different controller states. The X button to remove the sensor and the selector to choose which type of sensor you want. We also have the name box where you can rename your sensor and a drop down arrow where you can minimize the sensor. Okay, so that basically covers the always sensor on the logic brick side. So now we're gonna step into Python and have a look at what sort of attributes might be useful to you there. Okay, so here we are inside of Python, and I've just got this small sort of example script here. So we import logic, we get the controller, and then we get the sensor that this controller is attached to. So the always sensor can be gotten the same way as any other sensor, and now we're going to jump into the different attributes that you may want to use. Now these are only what I think are the most useful ones. If you want to check out all of the ones that this sensor has, there is a link in the description below. So we're going to have two major categories of attributes. We're going to have configuration attributes, and we're also going to have status attributes. Configuration attributes are mainly going to be equivalent to the buttons that you can select on the sensor. The only difference is we're accessing these through Python. So you can see in this first set of examples, we are getting the configuration attributes. 
we are going to be assigning the different attributes that this sensor has to various variables. So first we have tap, which you can get with your sensor dot tap, and this will return a boolean, a zero or a one, indicating whether tap is turned on or turned off. Next we have frequency, which is which you can get by doing sensor dot frequency, and this will return an integer, which is the same number that is set on the sensor. Next we have name, which you can get with sensor dot name, and this is getting the name of the sensor. Next is own, which you can get by sensor dot owner. And what this does is it gets the object that this sensor is attached to. So for instance, this sensor is attached to the default cube, so this would return the cube object. Next we have invert, which you can get with sensor dot invert. And this again returns a boolean, which basically just says whether invert is turned on or turned off. With many of these configuration attributes, you can also set them. There are a few of them here. Uh, the first one is sensor.tap equals true. So that is setting tap mode to be turned on. Next is sensor.frequency. I can set the frequency to a number between 0 and 1000. Next is sensor.invert equals true. And that is again just setting whether the sensor invert is turned on or off. And next we have the status attributes. There aren't very many for the always sensor. There are a lot more for many of the other sensors, which will be more useful later. But for the always sensor, we have positive, which you can get with sensor.positive. And this will return a boolean that indicates whether or not the sensor is currently positive. So for a collision sensor, if a collision sensor was positive, that means it detected a collision. And next we have status, which is sensor.status. Here's a little comment in the code explaining what status is. Status returns a 0, a 1, a 2, or a 3. And that is the same as these constants, and I highly recommend you use these constants. You will see the use of constants in most programming. It's common practice. So in the case of sensor status, we have these kx sensor constants, which are kx underscore sensor underscore inactive, kx underscore sensor underscore just activated, active, and just deactivated. Using status is really useful if you want to have some more fine control over when certain things are executed. For instance, if you're using an if statement, using sensor.status will offer a little more control over when that if statement triggers as opposed to sensor.positive. And those are what I think are the most useful attributes for the always sensor and that is a basic overview of the always sensor next time we are going to be looking at the actuator sensor we're going to be going through the sensors in alphabetical order and now it's time for some boring jib jab stuff so huge shout out to monster from the blender artist forms uh, he shot me a private message after i put up the first version of this video which you may not have ever seen uh, because there were some mistakes in it, and he took his time to uh, look through, point out those mistakes, and correct me on them. So I want to say a huge thank you to Monster for that. Um, hopefully this one was a little more accurate. I'm always striving to improve. Also, I wanted to let you guys know that my larger tutorials are not going away. I'm working on one right now for you guys, so hopefully you'll enjoy that. This is just sort of a uh, an extra series for people who want to really know what the sensors, what the different sensors do, and some of the stuff you can actually use them for in Python. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section down below. I would be more than happy to try and answer them for you. I'm not an excited. I'm not an encyclopedia, I don't have all the answers, uh, but I will try my best to point you in the right direction. Also, all of the links for anything pointed out in this tutorial is in the description down below, and the outro music that you're about to hear is also in the description down below. So, like I said, next time we are going to be covering the actuator sensor. But until then, I want to thank you guys very much for watching, and enjoy the rest of your day. Yeah. Uh, 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 u